Yo, 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 we live with the True Hip Hop Podcast, episode number three. I got my cousin, my homie, TLO in the building. What up, cuz? What up, cuz? It's a pleasure to be here on the podcast with you, man, talking about some real hip hop and things that's going on, entertainment news. It's a pleasure to have you, my G. You know what I'm saying? Um, What really got you into hip hop, man? Man, I think it was just... um, Growing up, listening to um 1140, man, you know, R.G. Holloman was on there, and she used to <laughs> That's my mom, Dukes, man. R.G. Holloman, to... a.k.a. Mock Mock, shout out to her. Yeah, 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 man. You know, she was uh, she was very inspirational to us, you know what I'm saying, for me, especially, like, on the music, because she played all the um up and current hits, you know what I'm saying? So you was able to get a, a feel of the early 80s, you know what I'm saying? Late 80s and 90s, man. So it was a transition when the music was changing and rap was coming into play. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. Like 40 was one of the first stations that we got to hear rap on. Right, right. Yeah, for those that don't know, um, 1140 KWM was a radio station back in the days, back in the 80s. You know, I was a kid. My mom was the DJ. That's where I learned the DJ because my mom was the DJ. At 1140 KWM, man, we used to call in, tell her to play the Fat Boys, you know what I'm saying, Whitney Houston, all that, Big Daddy Kane, Lean On Me, I remember, <laughs> and then she would play them, that was an act DJs actually played when you called in, <laughs> you, you know? had to make requests, see, these kids don't know nothing <laughs> about that now, all they know is iPads, because they don't right. know about you had to really call in to the station to hear your hit, right. they ain't play all day, <laughs> every day, 24 hours a day. Mm-hmm. Shout out to my mom, R.G. Hollow, a.k.a. Mock Mock. Well, we're going to get into some hip-hop news, man. Um, it was a situation with Ice Cube with the last Friday with Warner Brothers Music. They not letting them release the uh, last last Friday movie, you know. Um, he's having issues with that. I'm going to read you a little something um, about the article um, in the New York Journal earlier uh Today, it said Ice Cube wants Warner Brothers owned by AT&T to surrender its rights to the Friday property and to the other two movies he made, All About the Benjamins and Players Cub. According to the correspondence and his lawyers have sent the studio uh, mad letters and issued warnings to release his uh, movies. Um, this is what the Wall Street Journal has revealed, man. Uh, what do you think about that situation, TLO, man? You know, Ice Cube is a pioneer. You know, he made Mad Movies starting off with the Boys in the Hood joint. You know, he made the Friday series, which are all classics, one, two, and three. And so he's working on the last Friday movie. And um, it's been a decade, man, and it still ain't came out. And they stagnate in this process, man. What do you think about this whole situation? Um... I'm not for sure about all the facts, but from my understanding, I thought um, Ice Cube was a solo independent on, under um, Cube Vision. So I thought he had uh, all the rights in publishing to his own works. So with this um, new rev- revelation, it seems like he signed over the rights to his publishing or the rights to the um, royalties from all the movies. So he must have got paid up front. I don't know, but it's crazy because yeah. um, we need that movie to come out. Yeah, we've been waiting for uh, 10 years for this movie to come out, man. I hope uh, Ice Cube and Warner Brothers can get it together, man. We would like to see that movie. Uh, Chris Tucker said he's not going to be in it because he's past that. He's making $25 million a movie, you know. Um, all the legends are gone. Debo is gone. Uh, Pops is gone. Uh, Smokey's uh, Janet. Uh, the, the love interest one. Uh, she's gone. Um, I don't know what type of movie it was, but Ice Cube always switched it up. You know, like bringing in Cat Williams and uh, Mike Epps in the other movies. So um, I would I would like to see what this last Friday is about, man, and see how we put it together. I hope they work that um, situation out, you know. All right, man. On to other news. Um, Little Kim and Nicki Minaj. Uh, DJ Envy seen Little Kim at the BT Awards and asked her who would she battle in a versus, and she picked Nicki Minaj. 
you know, this is two different eras, you know, Little Kim is from the 90s, and uh, Nicki Minaj is from the late 2000, 210s, all the way up to present. You know, who would you think would win this battle? And how do you feel about this, Tim? Um, I grew up with Lil' Kim. You know, Lil' Kim is a legend. Sure. Yeah, a legend in, in hip hop. You know, she opened, for me, she opened the doors. Because before that, um, she opened the doors to make rap sexy for women. Because before that, you know, we had Queen Latifah. You know, she was out there. She, and don't, don't get me wrong. Queen Latifah had bars. You know what I'm saying? We had MC Light. You know, MC Light had bars. You know what I'm saying? Them was two of my, um, and, and Rage, Rage, that Rage, you know, shout out once again, cause to Ice Cube, you know what I'm saying? Cause that was one of his projects, you know what I'm saying? One of his artists, you know what I'm saying? But the lady of Rage, she was cold, you know what I'm saying? She had bars. So, um, I feel that, um, she, Lil' Kim made rap sexy, you know what I'm saying? It wouldn't be no Nicki Minaj, it wouldn't be no, um, Cardi B, no, Megan. Uh, yeah, Megan Thee Stallion, all these chicks that's right now city what girls. I, um, what I feel about that, man, it's like really two different eras. Like, you know, Little Kim had the 90s and really started, stopped around 05, and then Nicki picked it up from 2010 or 11, whatever it was, to now. So I think uh, Foxy Brown would have been a better match up with uh little kim like we was talking about earlier matchups and stuff like that like foxy and kim with with the 90s with their records would probably would have been a better matchup to me i don't know but Nicki minaj got some hits don't sleep on her she she do got some bangers man that pink album did good and um she had some some she got some classic songs she can do joints with the young money and all of that but um that's that's an interesting matchup uh and it depends on what songs they play. You know, they got 20 each. It definitely depends on um, uh, what songs they play. So. I mean, I know I know Kim got, Kim has 20 hits. You know what I'm saying? She she, she a um, legend. And um, in this rap game, she she battled with the with the best. She put her pen, you know, she, she cold with the pen. Oh, Kim well, actually definitely. write her own rhyme. You know yes, what I'm saying? Yes, so, we check the credits on that one, y'all. It's say Kimberly Jones. That's the real name. You know what I'm we check saying? the credits. So, so people saying Biggie wrote her raps and all that. No, she wrote her own rhymes. Yes. You so know what I'm saying? I, I, don't, I don't think that you can contend with that a lot. You know what I'm saying? Right. You could put the, anybody, that you could put together hot songs now with, with hot collaborations. You know what I'm saying? And your right. bars don't have to necessarily be what's catching and what's um, motivating your audience. See, Kim was in the area where your rhymes was captivating. Yeah, the in the nineties you definitely you know had to have them bars to come out, you know. So Kim was sexy with bars and she was staying up there in her lingerie. You know right. what I'm saying? She was slayed most uh, all the women and half these niggas to pieces. You know what I'm saying? And she just she thorough. She came out of real camp. She came out of real click. Um, Biggie had mad love for Kim. You know what I'm saying? She took the torch. A lot of people, you know what I'm saying, when they get handed the torch, they don't know what to do with that shit. But Kim actually took that torch, man, what was handed to her, and she made her own moves. Right. She she made the lane and, and um and all different through uh her marketing, through clothing. Uh she was the first true woman who was getting off into them the different lanes with the clothes the cosmetics the hair the nails you know what i'm saying everything for me everything now is just a reproduction of her videos and her style where she was advanced before all this stuff now exactly you know what I'm saying? um so she set the blueprint yes exactly that's what i was just about to say little kim definitely set the blueprint for Megan Thee Stallion and Cardi B and Nicki, definitely Nicki Minaj because Nicki Minaj copied a lot of Little Kim styles with the green hair, the blue hair, wearing the swimsuit. She, uh, so Kim is the pioneer of the female rap generation. Of, you know what I'm saying? So um, we're going to give that one to Little Kim. All right. So um, on to the other news. Recently, Bill Cosby has just been released from prison. You know, and um, that was like a tragic situation. No charges will be brought against him. And um, he's a free man. But um, we seen in the article, man, I think it was Hip Hop uh, Weekly or something, that um, Cardi B used to drug men and um, bragged about it. I'm going to read you um, 
a couple things it said in here. It said Bill Cosby was accused of drugging white women 30 years ago. Black people dropped his ass like a hot potatoes. <laughs> Thousands of memes destroyed his imagery and legacy. Black women demanded that he goes to prison and to die from the Me Too movement. And then Cardi B, this is on tape. I've seen this tape. Cardi B admits to um, being a sex worker who turned men, uh, who lured men for sex and drugs and robbed them to finance her career, received thousands of messages from black people defending her actions. She um, did what she had to do to survive. That's what her quotes. And brags she isn't going anywhere after confessing to drugging men and taking their money when they sleep in the hotel. Tell man, what you think about that situation, man? Do you feel that it's right or it's a double standard? Man, I say it's wrong for anybody if we have no place in society for a man or a woman to drug an uh, uh, unwilling participant for gain, sexual, uh, monetary, well, have you be. And anybody who can... Um, and, and, and behaves in that type of behavior should be reported and be turned into the law immediately. Immediately. Because I don't want my kids growing up in that type of world where, you, you know, y'all supposed to be going on a date. Now, you know, my daughter didn't got drugged because you didn't shot her some shit to try to get some, um, have sex with her, bro. And oh, for the same for a woman, man, if it's got to be like that, you just need to be like, look, I'm charging. Here go how much it is. And I can say how much you need and give you the money and we can go about our business. You know what I'm saying? But fire and that's the crazy, the crazy situation with this uh, is the person who admitted to drugging and raping and taking money from men is never went to prison. But the person who said they were innocent said, no, I didn't do these things, went to prison, lost almost everything, got his character destroyed. So it might be a double standard. Like, men have rights to him, you know? Even though you got famous and stuff, why aren't you held accountable for what you did and you admitted it? And dude came forward saying that she did. He came forward. They just laughed at him, man. <laughs> let him get out of here, man. <laughs> like, we don't believe this. <laughs> get out of here. It's your dumb ass. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, but I'm so glad. male, so male <laughs> sexual harassment is non-existent in this society. Basically, like, if a man me. say, "Oh, she tried, she raped me," <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna laugh at him. Yeah, if they gonna laugh at you, and it doesn't count. It doesn't mean anything. But but the woman is, go down there and she say, "He took, uh, yeah. he took it." <laughs> yeah, he's done. Man, he's done going for to jail, it. man. You better have a yeah. camera dog and when she yeah. said she was willing. It'll always be consensual, man. If she well, ain't with it, man, just walk away, man. There's plenty of other women out here that will um, give you some, man. You don't got to do that. There's no reason for it, you know. But, um, yeah, man, I'm glad Bill Cosby is home, though. You know, um, I guess they said he's innocent and he won't be brought back on any more charges. And, um... Yeah, that's that one right there. But we're going to um, move on to the sports, man. You know, it's one of our favorite times of year with the college football season. You know, we checked out the rankings today. I um, guess they got Ohio State ranked number one. And your team, the Michigan Wolverines, 10. Man, what do you think about the Wolverines, man? Should they let Harbaugh go, get rid of him? Or you think he deserves another chance? Man, anybody who is a fan of college, uh, collegiate sports and uh, understands success is the ultimate uh, form of uh, validation and um, rank of success. Um, Jim Harbaugh has clearly dropped the ball at Michigan's program. Right. Um, since Lloyd Carr, our program has been mediocre at best. You know, with other, other schools, um, Northwestern, um, and our league have become way better and um, much better with the talent and with the improvements and they overall um, play on the field. Michigan is, um, Jim Harbaugh has shown that he has, um, he is in up with defense and offense. So 
if he has the smart enough to hire the best offensive coordinator and hire the best defensive coordinator and just let them do their things so they can win, uh, the the league has changed. You have to pass the ball. You got to be able to run the ball. Uh, yeah, and, he's still running the pro uh, pro form uh, set. Yeah, you know, and um, then you can't beat your rival. And, and, and you and 10. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say, man. You zero and ten against Ohio State. You can never beat them. Like, they would not give, I feel, if it was a black coach, they would not give him past two years. Hell no, he you know lost. He it, was, it would have been over, man. Jim Harbaugh really got to go, man. There's plenty of other candidates out of there, man. And to have the team and the talent you be having and not producing, that's unacceptable for uh, Wolverine uh, fans. Yeah. You know, um, something got to be got this is the last year, bro. <laughs> For real, man. <laughs> this should, is the last year. They should have fired you last year. <laughs> yeah, that's what I last thought. Last year, I would not have gave you an extension. For what? Extension to what? To, to fail? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um. The key put um, mediocre. Talent on the field when you got the best recruits coming. All you have to do is just go do what Ohio State do, man. Get five black fast wide receivers and one <laughs> fast black quarterback, bro, and go out there and do your <laughs> thing, bro. How come <laughs> you can't figure that out? Right, right. So um, we hopefully um, it's real simple. Michigan get it together, man. We uh, we over here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. You know, we live in Michigan. We share the Wolverines on, um, but um, you know, everybody know Florida State is my team, and they got them at four. So hopefully, we can do big things out there too. You know what I'm saying? All right, man. On to the birthday shoutouts, man. Today is July six. And uh, today was 50 Cent birthday. Happy birthday to 50 Cent. Happy birthday to Jim Jones. And uh, happy birthday to Kevin Hart. You know, um, TLO, man, I enjoyed you having you on the show, man. This is my cuz, man. We chop it up. He'll be stopping by from time to time to give us album reviews and talk worldwide news and sports and whatever's going on in hip-hop, man. You'll see more of him. You know, along with my man Wolverine, you know, if there's anybody you want to shout out, man, before we get out of here. I just want to support everybody, um, especially I want people to stand behind my man Sterling. He's doing big things over there on Kalamazoo with the Stop Peace, with the Stop Peace movement and bringing the youth and trying to get active um, membership back into activities and programs for the youth to have things to do in Grand Rapids. My man did 15 years on his back, you know what I'm saying? Um, he's an outstanding guy and he's trying to make improvements in the city. So everybody who's um, involved with that, I want to send a lot of shouts out to um, his camp and his movement. All right, man. Uh, make sure y'all stream the album Gun Rules Find It, The Movement Part 3, you know, Tidal, Spotify, Amazon Music, YouTube Music, Apple Music, all the streaming sites, Gun Rules Find It, Volume 3, The Movement, DJ Blaze 589. Check that out. Support your boy. We out of here. One love. Peace.